Well, the machine is loaded, and this is the fieldist operator, Dave, who loaded this. So, Dave, thank you very much. No so, we wanted to ask you a couple of questions for our YouTube viewers. Like, what was challenging about loading this, such um, a wide, 12 foot wide machine? The biggest thing is not to rely just on your ramps. Uh, oh, add, add timbers in front to take the grade out. Oh, yeah, I remember you put timbers, yes, like somewhere here, like yeah. spread, your, spread the timbers out so that it makes it the grade of the machine going up a lot less. The okay. other thing is, is to spin the machine around, run the counterweight up, especially since there's no stick and bucket on it. Yeah, so you were driving when the counterweight to, was that way. I had the final drives on and the counterweight out the back. Once yeah. it was on a truck is when we spun it. For, yeah, and we put chains because the machine was actually tilting. I yeah. think it was a good idea yeah. to put chains. But as you swing, always keep the butt boom as low, low to the ground as possible. So if something should happen, it won't it won't tip. All right. And when you drive like this, in a in a like when you have to be very precise, I'm just curious because some people always bug me why I don't use my feet. I always use hands. What do you use when you drive? I, I use I use the hand controls because I can. I, I feel I have a better. Yeah, it's much better, more precise. Feel, yeah, I might like. Feet are okay when you're driving, yeah. right straight. But that's what many people don't realize. Like on this trailer, you have so little margin of error, right? right? Like you're 12-2. If you guys can see, half of the track is beyond the edge of the trail. It's actually sitting half of the track is in the air. It's sitting on the our trigger board. So that's what makes it difficult, right? Yep. And the other thing is to make sure that machine has actually three ranges of tra travel. Best to have it obviously in low range. The slower you go, nicer you can go. Yeah. Okay. And so you use hands. Yeah. Just that's what I find works. And keep the keep the weight when you're going on. You keep the weight. Try to keep the weight towards yeah, the so trailer. When you go to take it off, the same thing. Pick it up. Spin it so the counterweight's on the back. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. We're gonna keep the chains on, and then we're gonna spin, spin the spin the house. Otherwise, uh, there'll be too much weight here, and it can just because Especially there's no, if you don't add timbers as you come off too. Yeah, yeah and, and plus there's no there's no stick, right? So there's yeah, more weight yeah. this way. Exactly. So, there's so. not enough weight to counter to counter counterbalance the machine the other way. All right. Okay. Cool, Dave. Thanks very much. Sure, thanks, okay. Yeah. So I spent the night in the truck. They locked me in this uh, property over there. Right there's a gate. And the guy who loaded me said it's better to go. That's the second yard over there. Like this street. This street, he says, it's very narrow. Well, actually, that's how I came in. But he says you can go straight there, straight toward that green house in the distance. And that street where the truck is now going, that street is wider. And he says, usually that's where uh, guys with lots of axle, that's where they go. Uh, but yeah, lots of equipment over here. And, uh, and I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about how we position the machine. And actually that one is much smaller. You see that excavator in the distance. That's also a Komatsu, but it's 380, I think, whereas mine is 490. And I remember that formula that, you know, you can use to calculate the approximate weights because there's no scale here. And I do have a gauge, but that's just approximate. But you see this? So here's my empty weight. Oh, it's more like 60,000 now, I think, because uh, when I did this, it shows 58,840 pounds total, and then uh, this is with the pusher down. If I put the pusher down, see, it takes a lot of weight from the front, so basically, uh, but this is without the flip box. I know the flip box was like 550, so plus fuel, so I know I'm, I'm just under 60,000 now, you know? But how do you determine the position? Well, you need to know the your kingpin to the middle of the of the rear axle group. 
like that distance, you know. And then you have to know where the center of gravity is or center of mass. And basically, I recalculated my kingpin to to the center of the re-axle group and because of the four axles and the kingpin and the flip box I'm at 48 feet that's my kingpin to middle of the axle group and so see if you do divide well not by 46 48 if you, over here if you divide one or two by 48 and then you multiply it by by um, you know in the middle Hold on, why do we have 48, 46? It should be 48, but basically, yeah, this thing has to be more to the rear. This is the truck, this is the trailer. Because I can only do this, you see? Yeah, like, you need to know your empty weights, right? So I can only put 5K in here because Ontario only allows me 10 kilos per one millimeter, which is 22 pounds, uh, because of the, you know, this 425 tires right so I don't want to add too much so I can only add 5k in here and maybe at 36 here which is total 41 so I have I can have 41 on the truck but the machine is 102 so I need to send 61 to the trailer where it's only 21,000 so then it becomes 80 just over 80 right 82 which is okay and so yeah that's what we we gotta have 41 here and 61 there which means that it cannot be in the middle it cannot this center of mass cannot be at uh, 24 feet like 48 right so if it's a 24 then it will split 51 here 51 here so that's too much for the truck not enough for the trailer so I calculated it has to be around 29 instead of 24 it has to be 29 so like four feet towards the trailer away from the kingpin so kingpin to center of mass 29 feet okay got it clear as mud all right and uh, so it's always useful it's whenever you have a brand new truck brand new trailer you gotta you gotta scale them are we still recording yeah and uh and so it's gonna be a i thought yesterday i would start driving but the sun sets at 4 30 you know and the machine was dirty and of course you know it's hard to wash it at night and it was already you know it's getting cold and so now we're washing it but because it's so dirty it, it has lots of actually concrete in there you know but we agree that we'll We'll try to do our best while I'm sitting here. The, the poor guy is dealing with cold water over there. But I said, you know, whatever you can remove from tracks, that's what uh, CBP, you know, and uh, Canadian Customs are looking for. There should, if it's if it's dirt, it should not be there. If it's concrete, like what do you do, right? It's already part of the track, you know. And so yeah, I told the guys that once we, uh, once you guys uh, finish loading, I think, uh, can you please move the machine since you know you already loaded? I can do it myself, but you know, I'd rather let him do it. So I explained to him my math, and we agreed that because this thing now does not have the stick, uh, also known in scientific circles as dipper, right? The lower part of the of the. Of the arm so the top is the boom right the boom is connected to the machine and the dipper or stick is connected to the bucket right that part kind of like uh, kind of like one of these right and so I have the top part but I don't have the bottom part right and of course the way the excavator is designed is it's designed to to work right to grab earth you know I mean material and product I like earth yeah right I was just thinking in Russian because earth is земля but it's planet earth but in Russian земля also means dirt you know uh, but, and so when the excavator has everything it, it's the center is pretty easy to identify the center of mass is where the big circle is like where it spins and there's usually two 
two small rollers in there and right between those rollers that's the center of mass or center of gravity for that thing you know that's when it has everything when it has the you know the stick the boom the counterweights right but again this thing does not have that and so we agreed with the with the driver who loaded this with the excavator operator that now because there's no it the stick the stick would have been you know on the trailer now it there's no stick right uh, so the center of mass is now closer to the truck you know so it's not between those two rollers it's actually closer and I measured this morning right now from the kingpin I'm 27 feet to the center between those two rollers like which would be the center if we had the stick so basically if we're looking at, at this particular situation then probably right now I'm at about 25 feet because the center of mass is closer this way right I'm 25 so I'm almost like you know 48 right is my total kingpin so I'm, I'm just one foot over the middle which means I guarantee it I have too much on the truck and so that's so job number one clean it up job number two move it by about two or three feet like whatever i'm already at the end of the deck i only have like three feet left so i'm gonna move it and job number three i check the height and because there's no stick uh, it looks like it's pretty close to 13 six you know the tallest point on this is the exhaust pipe like there's handrails those are tall but the exhaust pipe uh, is like six or seven uh, inches taller than the handrails you know and the top of the boom is way below so uh, and so I thought wait a second so I looked at that little assembly that protects the exhaust pipe and it has bolts in it so I tried to unscrew them I, I was able to take out four but two are like all rusted and I don't want to you know erect them so so we're gonna take off that cover and then i i saw that the actual exhaust just has a clamp on it so you take off that clamp you can take the top part of the exhaust so it will be flat and so then the handrail will be the tallest point of the machine so i'm pretty sure i'll be i'll be legal you know like 13 6 i'm gonna use i'm gonna use uh like position one level one in the back so yeah, it's a bit scary, of course. It's a bit scary because the tracks are so wide. And I double checked the 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 width. They were correct about the width. 